Hey guys, welcome back. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss uh, seller's market phase two. All right, so seller's market phase two. Now, these are some key indicators of a seller mar seller's market phase two. And you wanna look out for these indicators because what typically happens is once we reach the end of a phase one seller's market, it really begins to accelerate like really, really quick. Uh, you, you could probably wake up the next day and you're like, yeah, this market has definitely cooled down, right? And it's almost, it's almost like overnight, all right? So the, the very first thing that you're gonna begin to notice on a seller's market phase two is you're gonna have a lot more investors become sellers, okay? A lot more investors become sellers. And I don't mean, um, you know, uh, a lot of the mom, mom and pop shops, but when I say um, investors, because we're all investors, but I'm primarily talking about a lot of the uh, mid and larger uh, investors or groups begin to sell their properties, right? They're now starting to exit the market because smart investors at this point will begin to exit that market and search for other emerging markets. That could be overseas, that could be in India, that could be in the UK, that could be in California, probably not in California, but it could be in the Midwest, right? Someone from California could be looking for the Midwest as an emerging market. Smart investors at this point are going to begin to exit the market, all right? And what you're probably, what you see a lot of times is once you get to this, this area, um, <clears throat> you're gonna have a lot more compressed cap rates and you're gonna have a lot of the newer investors uh, because, you know, in the, in the market, in the market phase one for a seller's market, they've already been enticed from the media to jump into the market, right? And so at the time that they're kind of geared up to buy something, the market has switched from a phase, from really from a phase two buyer to a phase two seller. And at this point, they're kind of caught with what's left on that inventory. And so at this time, the smarter investors are exiting those markets and they're looking for more emer emerging markets. Now, emerging markets could be a neighboring city or a neighboring state, or it could be, you know, in the, in the, in the opposite hemisphere, right? It really depends on uh, how far are the investors willing to look and prospect for their next opportunity, okay? You then start to see higher time on the market. So remember, um, in that really strong economy, right, the optimism that took place in a phase two buyer and exiting the phase or, or beginning to enter into phase two, uh, one seller's market, we had quicker time on market, right? But now the days on market, time on market is increasing. And what you begin to see is there's a slower job engine, right? So there's probably less, there's basically starting to kind of cap back to less of an expansion for some of those businesses. People are starting to use less of the, of the office space. Uh, there's more retail vacancy. And when those are finally filled, uh, it's, it's just a slower process of getting, of starting that, that clock. Because of all the, the gun, excuse me, because all the developers have been so gun high or gun happy, right? Pump, pump, or trigger happy, right? To go ahead and get the next development going or, you know, get another contract and begin to have the cranes in the air. You start to see the impact of, ha of having higher inventory and it turns into to an overcorrection. Because in a phase one, what happens is that we start to see the supply, um, we start, to see, we start to see the cliff of the supply and demand, right? It's kind of peaking over there. When we get into a phase two, we start to have overcorrection when it comes to when it comes to inventory. And that's a key factor there. If you're driving in some areas, downtown, midtown, whatever, and you're starting to see that there are more cranes, right, in the sky, you're starting to see that there's more, uh, there's more construction going on, they're adding more units, more buildings, whatever. Um, and you have to think, to think to yourself, at what point will they be done with that construction, one, and two, at what point that they're done with that construction, will they actually be able to fill that that the, that vacancy, right? There's gonna be a time elapse there. So that's a huge thing. The, the other thing is there's a big change in demand. 
because the smarter investors are leaving, they're noticing that that equilibrium is no longer there, they're leaving, and um, because that because a lot of that larger money is leaving, the demand really changes almost overnight, right? And so now it becomes an area of where some of the more less experienced investors, uh, you can call it dumb money if you want, but the less experienced investors are into the market and they're not really driven off a of return, they're probably just driven off of the 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 gratitude or the happiness of ownership um, or the pride of ownership and not really off of the fundamentals, right? So at this time, you have the, the really the smart investors leaving and looking for other emerging markets. This right here in the seller's market phase two is the riskiest of all, especially if you have stagnant or declining job growth, all right? This is really the riskiest that, where you can be. Um, and because eventually it's going to it's going to push you into a buyer's market phase one, where this overcorrection of inventory turns into a high vacancy, that uh, the the slowness of the job engine turns into higher higher unemployment, and the cycle begins to start all over again. All right. So I hope this was valuable for you guys. I hope you've learned quite a quite a bit. Keep in mind that you can use these key factors to grade where your local market is or the markets that you invest in. And then you can also compare that to neighboring markets to see what phase that they are in a cycle. And finally, you can look at the, uh, the global and the national economy to see what phase uh, the economy itself is in. And that will help you better de uh, determine what areas, markets, submarkets, micros and macros that you wanna invest in. So for example, based on these numbers, you may find out that it's probably best for you to, let's say, um, Minneapolis, um, Minnesota might be a, a better market for you. After you found out about the job engine, you find out about whether or not they have the actual demand. You're looking to see um, what key players are still in that market. And did, that, did, did the exit of those key players create an opportunity or did they go ahead and take majority of that demand away, right? So all these things play a factor. The time on market is a big one. It's a big indicator there when things, when things kind of sit for a long period of time, especially older products that sit for a long period of time because they're competing with the older correction of, of, uh, of inventory. So hope this served you guys, and I will see you all on the next video.